Hello friends, this video on current electricity part 6 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Please make sure that you have watched all the videos till part 5 before going ahead with part 6. Now let us move ahead to the next topic which says who carries current. Now the question is, I told, we now we know that okay fine current flows due to the flow of charges or flow of electrons or whatever it is. So that means there is a carrier who carries current either it is electron or it is something else is it electron every time no matter whatever the object may be it is always an electron whose responsibility is to carry current or is it different in different kinds of objects. So now we will see the current carriers for solids in case of liquids as well as in case of gases. We will see who carry currents in each of these. So when I talk of solids, it is the free electrons which carry current in solids. So what are free electrons? I can also call them as electrons. But why am I calling free electrons? These electrons are called free electrons because they are free to move around here and there. But from where do these electrons originate? What happens is, now you look at this diagram very carefully. When I talk about any metal, let us take any example. For example, let us say a metal, say a copper. Let me consider copper, your Cu. You have the atomic, what is the atomic number for Cu? It is 29. So if you write down the electronic configuration of copper, what do you see? In your chemistry, you would have studied how to write the chemical, uh, the electronic configuration for any element, right? So if the atomic number is 29 and if you write the electronic configuration for copper, what do you see? You will see that there is one electron in the valence shell. What is valence shell? Valence shell is the outermost shell of the atom. So in the outermost shell, there is only one electron in case of copper. If you want, I can write down the electronic configuration as well. So the electronic configuration for copper looks somewhat like this. 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p6. 4s1 and 3d10. Right? So that means the outermost shell is 4s. So this is the outermost shell with only one electron. So I am sure that you all know how do we write this electronic configuration and even if you do not know please refer to your chemistry textbooks. So when you look at this atom, when you look at this configuration you see that there is one valence electron in the outermost shell. What happens to this valence electrons? If you try to draw the atomic diagram for copper for example, let us suppose this is the nucleus, okay? This is my nucleus where you have protons and neutrons, fine? And then you have different shells like this, in which different electrons are moving, correct? So like this, you have your different shell and when you reach the outermost shell, you find that there is just one electron in the outermost shell. So this outer, this electron which is there in the outermost shell is the one which is most loosely bound to the nucleus. Like obviously this is quite true, right? As you go away from this nucleus, your bond with the nucleus will decrease. Like for example, as you go away from your uh, friend, the bond between you and your friend will decrease, right? And as you both come closer, the bond between you both will increase. So similar is the case here. For example, you have a friend who stays with you in your room, right? And you have another friend who stays in, say, some other city. If you are staying in Delhi, your friend stays in Bombay. 
Now, if the friend who is staying in Bombay, if he leaves India and goes to some other country, that will not affect you that much as compared to the friend who is staying with you in your room. Because you are more attached to the person with whom you are staying, right? So similar is the case here. The valence electron is the outermost electron and it is the most loosely bound or loosely attached to the nucleus. So it is easier for this electron to get away from the atom. So whenever that atom, some extra energy is given to the atom, the very first electron that comes out of the atom is the valence electron. So the valence electron always have a tendency to come out of the atom. So what happens is, let us suppose that this is some object, this is some solid object in which any solid object will have to, let us suppose if I have a copper wire, that copper wire will not have just one copper atom, right? It will have numerous copper atoms. So what will happen in all those copper atoms, the outermost electron will be revolving somewhat like this. So here, now you understand what the, each figure represents. Each of this represents one atom of copper, where this red circle represents the nucleus, which contains the protons and the neutrons. And this green, green, the, the green balls represent the electrons which are revolving around the nucleus and the blue ball represents the valence electron which is the most loosely bound and which is most free to move about here and there. So what does this valence electron do? It keeps jumping from one atom to another. It keeps jumping from one atom to another and that is how it keeps moving inside the solid. So these electrons are free and they carry current as they move. So the movement of free electrons basically gives rise to current in case of a solid. So you understood how is it that free electrons are the current carrier in case of solids because in case of and I took the example of copper similarly you take any example of solid you consider any metal you go to your uh, chemistry textbook and from the periodic table you look for any metal which is a good conductor you will see that they will have some free electrons in the outermost shell not necessarily just one electron they but they will always have their outermost shell no, neither completely filled nor partially filled so they will always have their outermost shell with lesser number of electrons which will have a tendency to jump into another atoms. So this is how current is carried in case of solids. Now let us look at the scenario of a liquid. What happens in case of a liquid? In liquid positive and negative ions carry current. Thank you. Please visit examfear.com to watch free educational videos Try free online tests, get the best quality study materials, study from the best tutors and mentors and much more. Thank you once again.